What is Up Amigos? Today we're talking about something that I've had a lot of people ask me about, and this is about funneling air through a car. And this usually comes after you talk about the actual wake of a car and the main contributor to the drag. So if you don't know about the general drag production of a car, check out this video here, where we go through like, for example, pressure, pressure drag. But generally speaking, we have the flow coming over the top here and underneath, and we have some wheels here, and they're not that big a deal for this particular concept. But anyway, for a typical car, generally we want the flow to stay attached around the back here. And if it is a sedan or like a, um, a wagon or a, an SUV, then obviously the, the roof will extend it out back here and the flow will come over. But regardless of which type of car it is, once it gets to the back here, the flow will separate and will start to get quite a large wake. And this wake is the main contributor to the drag of the car. And this is predominantly pressure drag. So a lot of people ask me, a lot of you amigos ask on the comments as well, if we funnel air somehow from somewhere through the car and then shoot it out the back, that can reduce the wake size and that can reduce the drag because the pressure drag is dropping and hence the drag of the overall car. So why don't we do that? Well, there are a few things to consider. It's not just about lift and drag, which we'll go cover in a second. It's also about practicality. So the first thing to note is that one of the main reasons why we don't have this in a car is that we have a lot of things in the car. So we first of all have people in the car. They're sitting here, depending on how many you have. So that means that we can't really have <laughs> troops going through in between people. That's quite strange. People want to interact with each other and talk and they want to have this thing in the way, which will also potentially make the ride uncomfortable. Secondly, we have, for example, the drivetrain, engine, transmission, all these kinds of things that also prohibit where this tubing can go. So let's say you want to get fancy with it and you want to make the tubing zigzag around so that people have their room to um, sit there and not be uncomfortable. The transmission has its room, the engine has its, ro its room, whatever. And then finally it comes out the back here. So we have air funneling off and reducing this wake size and hence the drag. Well, that will not necessarily reduce the drag either, because if you have this snaking going on with this tubing, just making it redirect the flow really, then that results in a lot of losses, not just with the skin friction drag, because you have a greater surface area that the flies to go over, but also a lot of these back pressures. So this corner here is going to force the air a little bit back here, because as the flow comes in, it's gonna hit this corner and there's gonna be high pressure here, kind of stopping the flow going through. The same thing happens with all of these corners around here. So you will actually lose a lot of energy in this flow coming through. And then the resulting flow coming out of the back here won't necessarily be that fast anyway. So we might actually increase the drag by doing it this way. So that is one reason why we don't funnel air through the back of the car here. There is actually a way that we can do this and this is actually becoming more and more popular, which we'll cover in a, at the end of this video on how we actually do kind of funnel the air through. It's not how you think though. But anyway, in terms of the drag, let's talk about what this funneling would entail in terms of the drag. So as I mentioned, the main component of the drag of a car is the pressure drag. But we also have the skin friction drag and the vortex drag for any car really, and almost any object almost. So in terms of the pressure drag, we may reduce that with the wake, making that smaller. But because we have such a large tubing and a lot of surface area, the skin friction drag may increase and that may override the loss that we get from the pressure drag reduction and the, the, the benefit from that. And also, when you have the flow coming out here, let's say it is a jet. Well, you have separated flow around these edges and these are wakes. So you have a jet going through wakes and that will result in a lot of vortices forming here. That results in a lot of vortex drag. So coupling that with the skin friction drag that you get from this tubing, that may override the benefits you get from the pressure drag reduction. So that is what is to consider in terms of the drag. In terms of the lift, now funneling the air through actually potentially has more to gain in terms of the lift um, than the drag does. The main reason is because in terms of drag, we have over the last 50, 80 years, we have really fine tuned a car to uh, make the underbody quite aerodynamic. We have the flow coming in, hopefully staying attached, and at the back we have a diffuser, which a lot of work has gone into to make diffusers very aer aerodynamic. So if you start to bleed air off from underneath, for example, then that starves the underbody of flow, and that results in a lot of these flow control devices, such as the diffuser, not working properly. That then reduces potentially the uh, benefits you get overall. So that is for the drag, but for the lift, we haven't really 
manage to overcome a lot of negative effects of the car on the lift. So just overall, you don't really want a car to produce lift. The main reason is because at high, stability, at high speeds, you lose stability. And the reason why cars are so bad in terms of lift is that cars are generally pretty much just a wing shape. When you think about it, it's a fairly flat underbody, a flat, fairly curved top. So generally speaking, this is effectively like a cambered wing. It's a very wing shaped body. As such, they are very prone to producing lift. And relatively speaking, we've actually done a lot more work on drag reduction and gotten pretty good at it compared to lift reduction. So if you were to siphon air off from the top region here, then you may actually be able to uh, reduce the drag that the lift of the car and also increase the stability. Alternatively, if you then get it from underneath, you may be able to create a suction force underneath, then pulling the car down and that reduces the lift as well. Also, the diffuser, we need to make sure that we have flow coming over the diffuser properly because if we've siphoned too much air from underneath, then we are starving the diffuser of flow and that means that we don't get to kick the flow up as much, which means that the lift actually increases. So that is a potential problem that we would have in terms of lift if we siphon air off from underneath. There's a balancing act going on between sucking it to the ground and not taking away so much flow that the diffuser won't work. Now, I mentioned that these days we are starting to look at how to bleed off air from other regions and siphon it into the wake to reduce the drag but not so much as just like a big tube going through the middle of the car. Actually, a fairly common, actually, I guess the leading way of doing it at the moment is we have air being siphoned off from somewhere, whether that is in the wheelhouses or from the um, cooling flow coming through, directing all the way through the car or, or wherever, and just above the diffuser. So let's zoom into this region here. Let's say we have the diffuser coming up like this to the back of the car and the flow this is the wheel and the flow comes up here and kicks up. We actually inject the flow up through here, just above the diffuser. So we get two jets effectively coming here and they both merge, that's fine. So we get effectively like a double diffuser kind of thing going on here. And so while we're not actually siphoning off the flow and pushing it just straight into the wake, we do siphon off the flow and in some situations for some designs and siphon it off and push it up. So this also reduces the lift as well, increases downforce and reduces the drag. So that is for all of you Amigos who have been commenting, well, why don't we just siphon air off and just stick it straight into the wake? That is really a crash course in why we don't do that and some reasons as to why we could do that and the balancing act between the different components of drag, lift, downforce and an alternative way which is becoming more and more prominent and this is the leading way of doing it. It's not like not that common, but this is the leading way of doing it. So if you like this video, make sure to like and click the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Peace amigos.